For many decades, most terrestrial experts believed that our Earth was the only planet in the solar system where water exists. Today, we know that the researchers were wrong in their assumptions about the galactic nature of water. Because in fact, since then we have succeeded in proving the precious chemical compound is on some of our direct galactic neighbors. Although the aggregate state of cosmic water often differs significantly from that of cool water on Earth, the discovery of these galactic water veins was tantamount to a genuine milestone. And indeed, some recent research results now indicate that some planets orbiting far from our home solar system also harbor water. What this sensational discovery is about in more detail, and what we have been able to find out so far about the occurrence of water in the universe, we'll show you now. Want to learn more about the most exciting discoveries and fascinating phenomena in the universe on a regular basis? Then don't forget to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to never miss one of our videos again. By giving us a thumbs up, you're showing us that we can keep you engaged with the content of our posts. K2-18b The year is 2015, when a new celestial body is added to the star charts. That planet orbiting the red dwarf K2-18, 124 light years from our terrestrial home, has been referred to as K2-18b since its discovery. Quickly, researchers found out that the exoplanet possesses approximately eight times the mass of our blue homeland planet and consequently is classified in the rank of the so-called super-Earths. In order to orbit its ancestral host star once completely, the celestial body needs only 33 days. Despite the short distance between K2-18b and its red dwarf, the exoplanet is located within the habitable zone of its native system. As a reminder, in the world of astronomers, the habitable zone is the range of distances a planet must be from its central star so that the water on the celestial body can exist in a permanently liquid form. The fact that this is the case here is due to the fact that the red dwarf is clearly smaller than our sun. While the mere discovery of the exoplanet caused quite a stir among experts, in 2019, the experts were ultimately left in stunned amazement. The data collected by the Hubble, Kepler, and Spitzer space telescopes revealed a groundbreaking discovery. Water vapor exists in the atmosphere of K2-18b. Due to its chemical composition and its spatial position, the celestial body is therefore the first known planet outside our solar system on which water could exist in a permanently liquid form. In addition to water vapor, traces of hydrogen and helium could also be detected in the exoplanet's natural protective shell. Consequently, it can be assumed that the atmosphere of K2-18b is significantly denser than that of our Earth. From these natural conditions, in turn, the pressing assumption can be derived that the water vapor detected by the experts condenses regularly and consequently falls down in the form of rain. However, scientists have not yet been able to determine whether this galactic precipitation ultimately makes it to the surface of the exoplanet. In fact, some experts believe that the rain on K2-18b heats up in the deeper layers of the atmosphere and then evaporates. Whether the super-Earth is ultimately habitable is therefore still literally written in the stars. Researchers generally assume that an extreme pressure prevails on the planet's surface, millions of times higher than on Earth. As a result of this enormous pressure, the natural conditions on the planet would naturally be very different from the conditions on our blue home planet. What effects the predicted strong cosmic radiation from the red dwarf have on K2-18b will have to be determined in future investigations. Water Occurrence in the Universe what do Mercury, Earth's moon, and Mars have in common? They all belong to those celestial bodies in our solar system on which the existence of water ice could be proven. In fact, most of the water within our solar system is in a frozen state of aggregation. The entirety of the ice deposits of a celestial body is called the cryosphere. And in fact, the cryosphere can also exist as a holistic, coherent layer which practically encloses the entire celestial body. Far more interesting for researchers, however, are those cases in which the water is present in a permanently liquid form. As a literal source of life, 
The existence of liquid water occupies an inviolable position within the cosmic search for extraterrestrial life forms. Thereby, the totality of the liquid water of a celestial body is called aquasphere. Again, in theory, it's possible that the liquid water deposit could cover the entire outer layer of a celestial body, thus forming a galactic ocean world. If the liquid water appears only at certain points on a planet or moon, as is the case on our Earth, we speak of a regionally limited aquasphere. As is well known, the chemical compound of oxygen and hydrogen remains permanently liquid only within a certain temperature range. This settles between 32 and 212 degrees Fahrenheit under normal atmospheric pressure. Although we have not yet been able to detect any signs of large liquid water accumulations on the other planetary surfaces of our solar system, some of our galactic neighbors seem to have possessed distinct river and ocean systems, at least in the past. In addition to Venus, here, Mars must be sighted above all. Accordingly, scientists agree that the aquasphere on the red planet has experienced an extremely eventful history. Thus, in the early years of the celestial body, surface temperatures prevailed that clearly permitted the existence of liquid water. The fact that this was the case is substantiated by various mineral finds in Mars meteorites. Thus, in the appropriate rock bodies, certain substances were discovered, as for example, layer silicates and carbonates, which typically develop only under the influence of liquid water. This principle can also be applied to the clay minerals, magnesium sulfates, and calcium sulfates that still exist on the surface of Mars today. The fact that the water of our neighboring planet disappeared steadily over the course of millions of years is due to the change of its natural atmosphere. In fact, today's Martian atmosphere has only a fraction of its former density. The situation was completely different more than 3 billion years ago. It is very likely that the surface of the planet was adorned by many rivers, lakes, and even enormous oceans at that time. Some experts even assume that the aquasphere once covered more than 70% of the Martian surface. Presumably, the last meltwater streams on the red planet dried up about 200,000 years ago. Despite this, temporary liquid water accumulations could still form on Mars today. This would be the case in the summer months, when the incident solar radiation melts small amounts of the uppermost water ice layers. Hidden Oceans does this rather sobering find now automatically mean that within our solar system, there is no celestial body other than Earth on which water exists in a permanently liquid form? If one follows the remarks of experts, this is expressly not the case. The fact that we have not yet seen wet spots on the remaining celestial bodies of our planetary system is simply because it literally hides itself from our terrestrial view. In fact, some moons in the outer regions of the solar system have long been suspected of hiding gigantic subglacial seas. When it comes to the question of these enormous subterranean oceans, Jupiter's moons Europa and Ganymede, as well as Saturn's satellites Titan and Enceladus, have repeatedly been the focus of scientific attention. Experts assume that the ocean on Europa could have a depth of 60 miles. Convection currents form within this subterranean sea, which set the overlying ice layers in motion and split them into plates. In the case of Jupiter's moon Ganymede, it's again assumed that the subglacial ocean is divided into several ice chambers. In detail, this means that the individual liquid water layers below the lunar surface are bounded by separate water ice shells. The evidence so far suggests that Ganymede's liquid water is saline and probably contains magnesium sulfate. The subsurface oceans on Enceladus and Titan are also thought to be composed of salt water, since the respective celestial bodies are so-called icy moons, characterized by bitterly cold average temperatures. The question quickly arises as to how it's possible under these conditions that water is present there in a permanently liquid form. Various factors are decisive for this. Salts dissolved in the water and the high pressure inside the celestial bodies lead to a natural reduction of the melting point. But it's also warmth that might play a significant role in the existence of these secret oceans. Due to the ancestral planets of the corresponding moons and the surrounding neighboring satellites, tidal forces act on the celestial bodies. These cause, in turn, a deformation of the moon body, whereby the materials in its interior rub against each other. As a result of this internal friction, 
parts of the kinetic energies are eventually converted into thermal energy. Moreover, the radioactive decay of the lunar core could also release heat in its interior. Consequently, the precise exploration and decoding of these hidden ocean worlds are among the most important research goals of future space projects. Accordingly, scientists are currently working at full speed on the development of modern drilling and melting probes. In the future, these complex technical devices will be brought to foreign celestial bodies, where they will then melt their way through the outermost ice layers. The probes could then dive into the subglacial oceans and for the first time, give us a direct insight into those hidden worlds that have been hidden from our earthly eyes for thousands of years. We're interested in your opinion. What do you think about this exciting topic? Go ahead and give us your thoughts, your suggestions, and your feedback to today's contribution in the comments. Would you like to see more interesting videos on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other contributions of our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. And we'll see you next.